We're looking at homework from section 7.2. This is question number 14. A random sample of 89 eighth grade students scores on a national mathematics assessment test has a mean score of 283. This test result prompts the state school administrator to declare that the mean score for the state's eighth graders on this exam is more than 280. Assume that the population standard deviation is 34. At alpha equals 0.09, is there enough evidence to support the administrator's claim? Complete parts A through E. Part A. Write the claim mathematically and identify H0 and HA. Choose the correct answer below. So, the claim that's made by this administrator is that the mean is more than 280. So mu greater than 280 is the claim. Since there's no statement of equality there, that would be an HA. The complementary hypothesis to a greater than would be a less than or equal to. So the other hypothesis is mu less than or equal to 280, which would be H naught. Now when we're doing our tests, we always look at HA to determine what kind of a test we're doing. Since HA has a greater than symbol, this is going to be a right-tailed test. So that's part A. For part B, we're supposed to find the standardized test statistic Z and its corresponding area. So we need to use the values from the problem to compute Z. Z equals X bar minus mu of x bar over sigma of x bar. Of course, sigma of x bar is sigma divided by the square root of n. So the x bar is the mean that we find, which is 283. Mu of x bar is the mean from the claim, which is 280. Sigma of x bar is going to be 34 divided by the square root of 89. When we use our calculator to compute this, we end up with 0.8324100999 rounded to two decimal places it is 0 0.83. So that is our z-score for the standardized test statistic. Let's make a little more room for ourselves here. And the next part, part C, says find the p-value. So we're doing a right-tailed test here. So in a right-tailed test, the p-value is 1 minus the table value. We're going to need the positive side of the standard normal distribution table because our z-score was positive, 0.83. When we look up the z equals 0.83, we get a table value of 0.7967. So our p-value is 1 minus 0.7967 which is 0 0.2033. So that's our p-value. Part D asks us to decide whether to reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. So we're going to go ahead and use our p-value decision rule here. And the p-value decision rule says that we're going to compare the value of p to the value of alpha. Now the p is 0 0.2033. The alpha was 0 0.09. We'll add two zeros to that to make the decimals the same length because that makes it easier to compare the values. We want to know which one of these is the bigger value. And here, p is greater than alpha. So whenever p is greater than alpha, according to the p-value decision rule, our decision is we fail to reject h0. So that is our answer to part D, fail to reject H0. Part E, interpret your decision in the context of the original claim. To do this, we have to remember that the original claim was that mu is greater than 280. Since that's an HA, and we failed to reject H0, when you fail to reject H0, that means you don't have enough evidence to support HA. So we always have to write our interpretation 
with respect to the claim, so we have to write it with respect to HA, so we cannot support HA based on this evidence. So we'll say at the 9% level of significance that there is not enough evidence to support the administrator's claim that the mean score for the state's eighth graders on the exam is more than 280. That's your answer.